more from the Faith Over Fear series now on Fixing the Money Thing. Now understand, it, the Bible says in Luke chapter 12, it was his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Let me say it again. He said it was God's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom. Now Luke chapter 17, 20 says the kingdom does not come by observation, for it is in you. Friend, you are a citizen, Ephesians 2.19, of the kingdom. You have legal rights, and you have rights to everything the kingdom has in it. In fact, the Bible says you are a co-heir with Jesus. A co-heir. Everything that Jesus owns, you own. Everything. Now, you got to, now see, I, as, as I'm speaking, in your spirit, the picture of life is changing. That's why you clapped. All of a sudden, hope is rising up, right? You go, wait a minute, I forgot that. Wait a minute, okay, that's right. It's been a tough week, but wait a minute, that's right, that's right. Yeah, that's right. See, you're getting excited because the truth of God's word is changing the picture on the inside of next week, right? Wait a minute, what am I doing with my head down? Why am I discouraged? Wait a minute, God is with me. Whom shall I fear? He is with me. He never lies. It's impossible for God to lie, right? If he said it, I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to sometimes kind of just slap yourself across the face a couple times and saying, wake up. Hey, self, listen to this. Get the Bible out. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, for he has rescued us from the dominion or the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. Some versions say the kingdom of light. So you change kingdoms, you change governments, you change function. And until you learn how the, the law of the spirit of life operates, the only law you're accustomed to is that law of sin and death. And so the sin and death is fear. Sin and death, death is fear. You're going to be held hostage. You're going to be sitting in darkness. You're not going to have a life. You're going to be a life of hiding. You've got to take a, make a decision to learn the law. Stop begging. Let me just say this very plainly. Stop the begging. God's kingdom does not operate that way. If you're begging, it just means you have no clue how it works. I know, I know. You're upset I said that to you, but I did. Because the kingdom is always yes. The Bible says every single promise is not maybe, not if you just did things perfect yesterday. They are yes because you own the kingdom. It's yours. You've heard me say this many times, my kids don't beg for breakfast, they expect it. When they were growing up, they didn't beg for breakfast. They didn't have to fast and pray for 21 days to get their breakfast. They actually acted like they owned it. They didn't even say thank you most of the time. They said, pass, just pass it, give me the cereal. Because they own it. See, you own it. Give us this day our daily bread. It's yours. Amen. Say amen, that's good. So Matthew chapter 14, verse 27, we find here Jesus walking on the lake. His disciples went ahead of him. He's coming out at night across the lake. They see him and are afraid. Who is this? What is this? But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus. When he saw the wind, he was afraid. And he began to sink and crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? Now, let's give Peter credit because he at least understood some things about the kingdom. He knew first off, as a human being, he could not walk on the water. But he said, if you will tell me to come, I can walk. So Jesus said, come. So he knew he couldn't do it by himself. But if Jesus said it, he knew he could. So G Peter did not walk on the water. He walked on the word. When he took his eyes off the word and put them on the circumstances, his old training came to play. See, as a fisherman, he'd seen storms in that lake many times. And as he saw the wind and the waves, all of a sudden his thinking reverted back to where he had grown up his entire life. His total experience was, wait a minute, this is not supposed to happen. Wait a minute, you can drown out here. This is a storm. Wait a minute, I'm in trouble. And he took his eyes off of the word and he began to sink. Now, you'll have to face that same battle. See, until you make a decision that you're going to look at the word of God and not the circumstances, you're going to sink every time. You're going to fall into fear's trap. 
Satan's going to bluff you every time and say you have no authority, no power, that you're doomed to die like everyone else. You're doomed to have disease and die. He's going he's to paint the pictures that you'll just buy into it. But unless you have the word of God, you'll not have any case to legally stand on. You'll not be able to argue your case and say, oh, no, not my house. Oh, no. The Bible says in Psalms 91, with long life he shall satisfy me. Right? Do you understand what I'm saying? See, as long as you feed on fear, you will live in fear. When you make a decision to live according to what the book says and realize everything here applies to me, then you're going to live the kingdom lifestyle. You're going to, have, you're going to actually have it in your life. As a pastor, my greatest, my greatest uh, thrill is to see people get it, you know, to get it, just understand the kingdom and live the kingdom life. That's what I want for you. Now, here's how you have, have to handle fear. You've got to change the picture got to change the picture. See, you've been programmed with a picture of the shadow of death. You've been programmed since you were little, born in the earth realm, that fear rules the earth. You've been programmed that way, and now you have to, you have to challenge it. I said you have to challenge it. You're going to have to, you're going to, have to fight it. You're going to, have to stand up against it because it's lying to you. It's, 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 it's speaking to you, and the Bible says fear has torment. Quite frankly, I lived those nine years, and I was uh, fighting those drugs and trying to find peace, which I couldn't find, and thinking thoughts I didn't want to think, and, and torment. It's hell on earth, friend. Literally, it was hell on earth. I got the T-shirt, but I didn't want it. And again, I don't want you to have it. So I'm helping you. So let me say this quite frankly. If you have fear today, it's because you've never been perfected in truth. The Bible says that if you know the truth... It will what? Set you free, make you free. The fact you have fear is evidence to you that, number one, you're not in faith, that you're not perfected in truth. In other words, fear is still, is still your, your, your basis. Uh, what you, how, how you believe life should happen is still based on that old law of sin and death. See, you've got to renew your mind to the new law of life. Until you choose. I can't do it for you. Now, you can come to church an hour every week, and we'll do a good job trying to get you there. But really, all I'm doing on Sunday morning is giving you an infomercial for the life you can have. That's all I can do. I'm going to try to get some principles to you. I'm going to say you can do it. I'm going to pat you on the back. I'm going to say, listen, you need to remember who you are. You need to get out there and do it. This is what your future is. This is what the Bible says. But when, it leave, when you leave this church, it's you and God. You've got to make a decision as a family and as a person. I'm going to have what God says. And you're going to make the time and the effort necessary to renew your mind. Amen? Yes, you have to make that choice. And I trust that as we keep putting it in front of you that you will do that. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So, in other words, don't think the thoughts of the world. Don't be conformed to how the world thinks, that shadow of death, how that law of sin and fear and death. Don't be conformed to that. Instead, be transformed by the word of God and begin to think the thoughts of God. Begin to say what God says about your problem, your situation. The Bible says every promise is yes and amen. You already have it. Changing the, changing the picture. So a promise carries a picture, doesn't it? Fear also carries a picture. Fear carries a picture. When you see or hear something fearful, it carries a picture. You either reject it or, or, you, or you began to, oh, no, and you began to meditate on it. See, the Bible says the shield of faith, which is agreeing with what God says, rejects fear or it quenches every fiery dart that's in Ephesians talking about how you handle life that shield of faith automatically rejects fear as a non-essential possibility it can't happen it rejects it as a lie it rejects it as nonsense because you are fully persuaded of what God says now, if you're not fully persuaded of what God says then again we go back to the same issue that you have a truth problem that you're not perfected in truth. You're still, you know, in that place of being renewed to the spirit of uh, sin and death when really you've been given the spirit of life and you've got to make a decision to, to be renewed to that. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. 
Visit GaryKC.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.